ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله بالغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك وبعد فإن أفضل الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في دين الله بدعة وكل بدعة في دين الله ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم أجرنا من النار my brothers, sisters in Islam, community members, respected elders and mashayikh, I begin with the greeting of Islam. May the peace and the blessings and the mercy and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you and upon you and your family members and your loved ones. Ya Rabb, Ameen. I continue by testifying that none is worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Acknowledging and reminding myself and you that the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final prophet, final messenger, and a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reminding myself and you that whomever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomever is allowed to go astray due to their own wrongful actions, sinful desires, and inclinations, none can guide back except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the ending of Surah At-Tawbah, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ When you hear this ayah recited, it's such a beautiful, beautiful ayah. And it captures the love and the mercy that the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam had for this ummah. Allah says, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ A messenger has come to you from amongst you. He's one of you. عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ Your struggles are dear to him. He carries your pain. He understands you. He's not a foreigner. He's not inhuman he's not superhuman he's not superhuman he's human he knows your pains your inferiorities your anxieties your stressors and he's been through it he's protective over you cautious over you and when it comes to the believers he has this ra'fa compassion Rahim, merciful. This is the Prophet ﷺ described in Surah At-Tawbah. And my brothers and my sisters, when you look at the love that the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ had for this ummah, there is no one khutbah or one book or one series that will allow you to really appreciate fully the amount that this man has done for this ummah. Wallahi, sufficient is the fact that the most common name in the world is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that each and every one of us has been touched by one or many of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's many many characteristics many many beautiful aspects of his personality that when we are blessed with our children we wish for them to take a share of what Allah has given him so we name our kids Muhammad and if you look at the Prophet وسلم, from the very beginning to the very end of his life, there are beautiful examples for all of us to learn from. If you look at the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, before receiving revelation, before being initiated into prophethood, he was known as As Sadiq Al Amin, the most honest, the most trustworthy. How many of you would be able to use one of those terms to describe someone around you? This is someone that I know is absolutely honest, absolutely trustworthy. Whatever they say is undoubtedly true. That's what the mushrikeen themselves used to call him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And when he received the revelation, the first day that he encountered the angel, and he needed to make sense of what's happening to him, he ran to his wife Khadija. And what did his wife Khadija say to him? Wallahi la yukhzik Allahu abada. Allah will never allow you to experience anything except good. You're good to your neighbor. You're good to the people around you. You're generous. You're there for people when they're in need. Allah will be there for you. I don't doubt that what happened to you is real. I believe in you. Imagine when your wife herself, your family, are the first to believe in you. That speaks to your integrity. A lot of us, we show good, we manifest good to the people outside, but to the people that need us the most, we're not able to maintain that goodness consistently, continuously, because it takes effort and it takes genuineness and it takes truth. You have to be really truly good for the people around you to see it consistently, because that is when we put our guards down. That's when we're truly who we are. That's when we remove the masks and we're truly genuinely who we are. And you will find that the people that love the Prophet وسلم, the most were the children, the young people, the family, and those that have experienced difficulties and challenges because they knew that he was a genuine man. The slaves loved him because he was genuine. His family loved him وسلم, because they saw goodness from him, genuinely, truly. And the children of Medina, including Ali ibn Abi Talib, who grew up in his house, including his, his Fatima, his own daughter. You know, sufficient is the fact that Fatima would say, every time I walked into the house of the Prophet Sallallahu he would get up for me to honor me. And he would kiss me on the hand. And I would do the same. Can you imagine? That's how he was to his own family. Aisha radiallahu anha. When she was asked, how was Muhammad at home? She says, كان صلى الله عليه وسلم دائما في مهنة أهله وكان يخدم نفسه وفي رواية بنفسه The Prophet was always صلى الله عليه وسلم at the service of his own family and he used to serve himself by himself. She said when he was with us he was fully available, fully accessible. There was no arrogance. There was no entitlement. He was completely available. Except when it came time for salah and prayer, he would get up as if we don't know him and he doesn't know us. Subhanallah. The ability to have an equilibrium in your life, to know where things go. So he was fully there for his family. He was fully there for his children. He was fully there for the people that loved him the most. And he expressed that loyalty even after they passed away. But he still maintained that motto of La ilaha illallah, Allah comes first. Consistently. Consistently Allah came first. That did not stop him from being there for the family. He was fully there. But the love they had for his family did not tip over and distract him from being there for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully. Look at his loyalty towards Khadija. When some people who came later into Islam and they weren't there in the times of Mecca. So they didn't know who Khadija was. So like, why is Muhammad وسلم, why does he keep mentioning her name? Why does he keep bringing her up? Who is this woman? What, what is she like? Why does he keep bringing her? Why does he keep sending gifts to her family even after, years after her death? Why does he keep saying, Ruzuktu hubba, I've been nurtured and blessed by her love. When the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, heard this coming from the people that are closest to him, he said, Wallahi, you will never understand. This woman was there for me when nobody else was. She supported me when nobody else did. And she did for this deen what nobody else could. Don't you dare speak ill of her or mention her except in the way that is good. And in the books of Siyar, historically, despite the fact that there may be a question about the chain itself from the books of Hadith, but on Nabi Wasallam, when he went back to Mecca, and when they asked him, now that he's got Mecca under his control, he could do anything that he wants to the people of Mecca. They asked him, where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? Should we give you a, a, a palace? Should we build you a mansion? Should we take one of the houses, Abu Sufyan's house? Or should we even take your home back? The home where he raised his children with Khadija. When he left Mecca, the home was taken over. It was stolen. 
by his family, his own family, the children and the cousins. Banu Talib. What did he say? He said, let them keep it. Abu Talib was so good to me while he was alive. Let them keep it. I have no interest in palaces. I have no interest in this or that. Simply allow me to sleep, to stay in a tent, a small tent. And I prefer for that tent to be close as possible to the place where Khadija is buried. So I can go show respect in moments of victory as she was there for me in moments of difficulty. That's sallallahu alayhi wa You know someone's true worth when they have power in their hands. And they could do with that power whatever they wish. But when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had power in his hand, it did not shake him. It did not bring a different face out of him. It did not faze him. And this was consistent. When he asked for the keys of the Kaaba, people shook like, oh, he's going to take the... Khalas, that's it. We've lost the keys. We've lost the Kaaba. And it was an honor for the family of Banu Shayba to have the keys to the Kaaba. And Uthman, the one from the family of Banu Shayba, he was the one in charge of the, the key. He refused to give it, but eventually he had no choice but to come and to bring it. And the whole time the family was like, oh, the, the only thing that we had as an honor was the key to the Kaaba, and now it's going to be gone. The Prophet Muhammad Sallam, when he takes the key to the Kaaba, he opens the Kaaba, takes the idols out of the Kaaba, and then he gives the key back to the family of Banu Shayba. And he says, Wallahi, no one will take this key away from you except someone of transgression. Until this day, the key of the Kaaba belongs to that family. Because no one dared to take on that title. I don't want to be a transgressor. The Prophet himself says, whoever takes the key from you is a transgressor. So till this day, Mecca has been through histories. Revolutions and ups and downs. The Kaaba destroyed multiple times, rebuilt multiple times, change upon change. Nation state this, community state that, and still the key belongs to the same family. And here the Prophet Muhammad taught us that he came to cleanse and to purify and to fix and to bring people back to Tawheed, not to take power away from somebody, not to build a community around himself. You know when the people, when that man says, yeah, if, if Allah wills and if Muhammad wills, just don't say that. Don't say if Muhammad wills, I'm just a human being. Don't do with me what the other communities have done with their prophets. I'm a mere human. When the companions came to him, said, Ya Rasulullah, the king of this is living this way and the Persian leader is living that way and the Qaisar, the Caesar is living that way. Allow us to honor you. Allow us to build this for you. He said, I will sit like a slave and I will eat like a slave because to Allah, I will always be a slave. That's who he, that's who he was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That humility manifested, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, consistently. When his wife built or, or, or she folded the mattress that he was sleeping on, the Prophet ﷺ was sleeping on the floor. Small bedding that was made out of palm branches and palm leaves put together. So sometimes it would leave a mark on his back. His, his, his mattress was this, this thick. Wasallam. That's it. Nothing else. On the ground. His entire life. And his wife felt for him as he was getting older. She... Notice that he might benefit from an extra cushion. So she bent the mattress in two. So he would get the extra cushion. He came home and he felt the extra support. And he said to his wife, why did you do this? That I did this out of comfort for you. I want you to be comfortable. He said, I'm afraid that the extra comfort would make me sleep longer. And I would not be able to stay up and to get up at night to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not looking for the comfort of this dunya. That's not why we're here. When he told Omar, when Omar said, oh, look at them and look at what they have. He said, yeah, Omar, are, are, are you not content? Even if they were take, to take the dunya and everything in it, even if they were to take everything and we get nothing out of this dunya, are you not content for them to take the dunya and for us the akhirah? And his last words, when he was given the choice to stay in this world for as long as he wills, according to some, he said, I go back. I want to go back. I long to go back to my Lord. 
I long to be in the vicinity, in the company of the one who created me. That's who he was, sallallahu alayhi wa my brothers and my sisters. And when you talk about his bravery, you look at the battles where some of the companions would hide behind him. You look at the battles where he himself was the first on the front lines, defending, not leading from the back, which he did sometimes, but continuing to be at the front. When you look at his generosity, he would take the shirt off of his back to give to the people when they came to ask. When you look at his generosity, Aisha himself, she said, he was like the wind. You know the wind that carries pollen, carries vapor, carries water, carries the source of life and just pours it without asking anything, without demanding anything, without wanting anything back. That's who he was. That she, she described him. He was the most generous of people. And he was most generous in Ramadan when he would meet Jibreel to learn the Quran. That's his wife saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you look at his determination, his vision, when everybody else around him told him, there's, there's no point. The people of Ta'if will never believe. Make dua against them. The people of Mecca will never believe. And even when the angel of wind came and said, give me the, give me the green light. What they did to you this time is completely unforgivable. What did he say? He said, no. Let them be because even if they don't believe, maybe there will come a time where not them, maybe not their children, but maybe their grandchildren will say, la ilaha illallah. And look at the peninsula now. Look at how many people now all over the world are united under the banner of la ilaha illallah. Look at all of us. From every background that you can imagine, every language, every ethnicity that you can imagine. And we sit together, we eat together, we love each other, we say salam to each other, we hug one another, we line up together, we say salam on the right, the left, at the end of the salah, we begin the salah with the tashahud, we end the salah with the tashahud, the adhan, and then end with the tashahud. And the one thing that brings us all together, that allows us to humble ourselves for one another and to treat one another as a brother and a sister, is the legacy of this man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina wa habibina Muhammad. When you look at his patience, when you look at that man who came and pulled at his scholar from behind, saying, I want my money back, even though the loan was not due yet. And Umar said, give me the sign. I will be the first to put him in his place. What did the Prophet sallam say? He says, ya Umar, you should be the one telling me to be more patient. And you, the man who came to ask, there's a better way to ask. Can you imagine someone is pulling your collar to the point where you can't breathe? To the point where your cheeks are red. And subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu in that moment where he's being insulted, he's reminding his companion to be easygoing. And beautifully, he says to the man, there's a better way to ask. This is him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my brothers and my sisters. And we all celebrate the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, each and every single day. When we name our children Muhammad. When we hear his name and say, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad. When we sit like how he sits, when we eat like how he eats, when we talk like how he talks. When we do the sunan and the nawafil and the extras to try to be brought closer to him. When we cry out of love when his name is mentioned. When all of the things that we study about in his books of seer and in the hadith books, those become examples for all of us. That's how we honor and that's how we celebrate the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be from those who truly love him, truly support him, truly honor him. And truly, truly embody what he taught because that is the best way to live the legacy of the Prophet. ﷺ. According to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul in kuntum Allah, Allah wa lakum. If you love Allah, then follow this man, Muhammad. ﷺ. Allah will love you and Allah will forgive you. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا لنا والغفور الرحيم
Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala man istafa. My brothers and my sisters, one of the many things that makes the Prophet Muhammad Sallam incredibly unique is his ability to set the best example for all of us, but at the same time to accommodate the most strugglesome person amongst us. He set the example for all of us, but he made room for the person that is struggling the most amongst us. That lady that came to him, Ya Rasulullah, I committed an atrocious act, zina. What did he say? He gave her a way out, a second way out, a third way out. We know the story. You're pregnant, go back and give birth. Your son is born, go back and raise him. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu made it very clear what is haram, what is halal, where the stand it should be. And he shut the door for that fitan. Drinking abolished in his life. Yet when those companions were still struggling, he said, don't insult them. They would drink and they would come in front of him and they would be whipped as was the punishment. And some would talk about them negatively. The Prophet Sallallahu would say, do not say this about them. Do not insult them. Because this is a man that loves Allah and loves the Messenger of Allah. But when it came to setting the standard in the highest way possible, he set the standard in the best way possible. When he walked into the treasury with his grandson Hassan and Hussein, and one of them took a small date that belonged to Bayt al Ma, that belonged to the poor people of Medina, and was about to put it in his mouth, the Prophet Muhammad rushed everything. Dropped everything, ran to him gently but firmly, tapped the hand and said, kikh, kikh, yak, yak. This is not to be touched by the family of Muhammad. Not even the smallest piece of a date would enter the stomach of anybody that belonged to his family. Because this deen, he made clear, was not meant to collect money and make profits at the expense of others. He was there to serve, not to be served. He was there to give, not to receive. And that's why at the end of his life, he raised. He looked at everybody around when he was sick. He looked at everybody around and said, Wallahi, every one of you that has ever done me a favor, I was able to give back and more. If I owe any of you anything, come and claim it now. If I've ever said anything harmful to you, wrong to you, hurt you, said anything directly, indirectly, even made a mention with my eye or a gesture with my hand that hurt you, come and claim it now. How many leaders could do that today? In front of the subject, say that. If I owe you anything, come and claim it. The fact that he could do that in itself speaks to the integrity of this man, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And when Allah forgave him, when Allah forgave him everything that has happened, he's into Jannah, granted and guaranteed. What did he do? He went home and he prayed longer. Aisha said, I don't understand if Allah has forgiven you, honored you, answered everything. Why are you praying longer? Why are you praying to a point where your legs are crumbling? He said, shall I not be grateful to my Lord? If I used to do this much before he did all of this to me, should I stop and do less? Or should I do more to express gratitude to the one who is the source of good? So he set the standard very, very clear, very, very high. And he was very, very careful and subtle with every detail. When he was walking at night in the darkness and he was with one of his wives, some of the companions paused out of respect, but they looked down. And what did he say? He said, this is Safiya, just in case. This is my wife. Have no doubt or confusion in your heart. Make no assumptions because this is who I am and this is what I do. He cleared any, any doubt, any confusion that would be in people's minds. Left no room for people to question his intentions or to question his decision making by being firm and by being honest and by being transparent. This is him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to love him by following him, to appreciate him by sharing his teachings, and to show respect and to be grateful to Allah 
by following his sunnah. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik illahumma lana fi ma aatayt. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyina wa habibina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyina wa habibina Muhammad. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنا عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا منقوتا الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استقوا استقيموا تراصوا اهتدلوا سدوا الخلل اتصلوا ولا تختلفوا الله اكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أمين وإذا ما أنزلت سورة نظر بعضهم إلى بعض هل يراكم من أحد ثم صرفوا صرف الله قلوبهم بأنهم قوم لا يفقهون لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم فإن تولوا فقل حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أمين أقم الصلاة لدلوك الشمس إلى غسق الليل وقرآن الفجر إن قرآن الفجر كان مشهودا ومن الليل فتهجد به نافلة لك عسى أن يبعثك ربك مقاما محمودا وقل رب أدخلني مدخل صدق وأخرجني مخرج صدق واجعل لي من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا وقل جاء الحق وزهق الباطل إن الباطل كان زهوقا الله